Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So this is a bit of a quick off-the-cuff video today. I just wanted to take a look at something that, as you saw in the intro, somebody linked to me. So uh, I've got the article on TechCrunch here, but we'll take a look at another in a moment. And as we can see, uh, Skylo raises $103 million to affordably connect the Internet of Things to satellite networks. So when I saw this, I assumed that this was sort of yet another one of these uh, IoT CubeSat companies. There's a whole lot of these. Um, Swarm Technologies, probably the most famous, got into a bit of trouble with the FCC a couple years ago. Um, there's Astrocast, which um, I hadn't heard much about. Lacuna, uh, Kepler Communications. All of these are companies hoping to launch uh, low-Earth orbit CubeSat constellations for Internet of Things. So obviously I was looking at this, I figured it's a similar deal. So yeah, I assumed it was one of those. Um, but what got me interested here is reading into the article a little bit, they say that they don't plan to do that. As you can see here, they talk about deploying on current geostationary satellites. And what's interesting here is this current. So obviously they're not putting up geostationary satellites of their own. Um, and they don't say anywhere in here anything about what satellites they're using. In fact, this article gives very few technical details about what this Skylo company actually plans to do. Uh, the company themselves still hasn't officially revealed much. So I wanted to take a look into some of the more technical aspects of this uh, Skylo system and um, see what we can find out. So let's take a look at that. So heading over to their website, you can see they talk about mobilizing the world's machine data. There's not a whole lot of technical information here, but if we go to their technology page, they show this little terminal thing. They have this sort of concept art of the satellite. They talk about the Skylo hub. They say it's um, portable integrated satellite transceiver and that it has a digitally steered antenna. So they show this little unit here one thing they don't include is a coverage map, which is a bit unfortunate because if they did, if you could see the coverage, you might be able to work out what satellites they're covering with. Um, but they do mention if you go over to the, uh, where is it, Industries um, Maritime page, they mention um, anywhere under the sky. So they at least sort of consider their coverage to be pretty good, which sort of initially leads me to think they this isn't just one satellite over like one continent they're they're talking about something relatively global here so when they're talking about using an existing geostationary network that they at least consider the coverage of to be relatively worldwide obviously the first thing that springs to mind here is Inmarsat and uh, Inmarsat does do sort of M to M IoT stuff they have this ISAT Data Pro I actually own one of these IDP terminals and uh, Inmarsat's coverage is quite global, so it, it sort of it looks like it stacks up with what they have there. It's worth noting that um, ISAT Data Pro came from sort of a similar situation to this uh, Skylo company. There was a company from uh, Ottawa, actually the city I'm from, called Skywave, that brought out this ISAT Data Pro service a couple of years ago um, in collaboration with Inmarsat, and they ended up getting bought out by Orbcom. So, yeah, Inmarsat looks like it ticks a lot of the boxes here, and they've done sort of a similar thing before for their ISAT Data Pro service, where they worked with a startup doing sort of IoT stuff. So let's look a little more into that. If you look up uh, Skylo Inmarsat, you can find this article actually from last year, which is in theory before their company was out of stealth, in the uh, Shillong, Shillong Times, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this, where they talk about uh, it's satellite-based, it works on narrowband through Inmarsat and not broadband. This article is very short, that's really all they say, but they seem to be saying that Skylo is in fact using something over Inmarsat. So let's try to find out some details about that. So this is the FCC's uh, ELS, or Experimental Licensing System, and we're going to do a search for anything where the applicant name includes Skylo. So yeah, 10 records is fine, we'll just search ELS, and here you can see we have nine records from Skylo Technologies. And it looks like these go all the way back to 2018. So let's take a look at these from the oldest to the newest. So if you look at their applications here, you can see that their first one was actually denied. So let's take a look at their second one here. We can hit View Grant and View Grant here. And we get this PDF. So as you can see, it's from Skylo Technologies, Inc. They were given this call sign. It's an experimental station. And right off the bat, there's a lot of good information here. So you can see they're using a mobile station in the San Francisco Bay Area. 
uh, these are the frequencies they're using, this is the power they're authorized to transmit with, and if you go down to the bottom page here, you can see this point of communication is Inmarsat I-4 F3, also known as Inmarsat I-4 Americas. So obviously from this we can see that yes, they're using Inmarsat, and they're on the I-4 satellites, which makes sense. And if you dig around a little more, you can find here, uh, this is FCC.report, which is just a site that makes it a little easier to find FCC stuff. Um, if you scroll down, you can see uh, they have this prototype here, which they're calling the X1.5 for the model number. They've made 10 units, obviously it's experimental. And if you scroll down here, you can see that their modulating signal is 10 kilobits per second, uh, again on these frequencies. And obviously this is a prototype, this all could change, but this is probably a relatively good idea of the rough sort of uplink speeds you might be getting out of this, though of course that could be completely wrong. So the other thing I wanted to note here is that if you look at their more recent grants, you can see um, they actually, it's, a, it's, a very, it's pretty similar, but if you go down to the bottom, you can see they also mention communicating with Legato's SkyTerra 1, which is a completely different satellite, not to do with Inmarsat at all. And there's been a lot of services on SkyTerra 1, most of which have not lasted very long, but it looks here like they're at least experimenting as well with things other than Inmarsat. So that's interesting. So yeah, their hardware looks reasonable enough. There's things like this out there. Um, but a lot of the interest that I've seen around this from the articles about it are this. They plan to offer connectivity for as little as $1 per seat and hardware that sells for less than $100. So let's start with that hardware price. They talk about hardware that sells for less than $100. This is really good if true, but seems a little bit strange to me. If we look at some comparable things, here we have uh, Iridium's Edge. This is on their SBD service. It's 360 bucks. This is the IDP 690, a terminal for Inmarsat's ISAT Data Pro, which is 750 bucks. Um, and if we look here at this uh, BGAN M2M terminal, because I'm guessing if Skylo has a steerable antenna, they're on Inmarsat's narrow beam services, not their wide beam, so maybe BGAN is comparable. The terminal is about 1150 bucks. So the hardware, maybe, but 100 bucks is cheaper than really any satellite IoT anything I'm aware of, except for the Global Star STX3, which is transmit only. So that's really interesting if true, but especially considering they're saying they have some sort of a electronically steerable phased array whatever antenna in this thing, less than a hundred bucks sounds really quite optimistic to me. And also if we're looking at sort of for SkyTerra 1, this is the Explorer 122 uh, MSAT G3 bundle. Uh, this comes with a push to talk unit, but the terminal itself is this thing. Um, this is a in motion phased array MSAT terminal. And it's 4800 bucks. Now that includes this uh, push-to-talk unit here, but I imagine the terminal itself isn't too cheap either. And of course, the other thing they mention here is connectivity for as little as $1 per seat. I don't really know what this per seat means. Typically, pricing something per seat is more for software than communication services, but if they really are talking about offering service for a dollar as opposed to it coming out to a dollar per device connected to it or something, that's a lot less than anything I'm currently aware of. So let's take a look at that. So the pricing that I know best here is for IDP, but that's probably the best comparison for this because it's an IoT service over in Marsat satellites. It's probably relatively close to what Skylo's talking about. So the cheapest plan I've ever seen offered for IDP is this satellitephonestore.com product test plan, which is $8.75 a month for one kilobyte, and it's $2.50 per kilobyte overage, which actually, considering that this, um, overage per kilobyte is the size of your whole monthly allotment. It's actually closer to a pay-as-you-go plan. And obviously with IDP, there's services much bigger than this $9 one kilobyte. So what exactly that $1 plan from Skylo gets you in terms of a data allotment, I'm not really sure. Even on the Global Star STX3, which is a transmit-only module, the plans are like $12, $14, and when they're talking about messages, those are only a couple bytes each. In fact, at $1 a month, they've become even cheaper than a lot of cellular stuff. If we look at this hologram.io here for IoT over cellular, you can see if we go down to one device, talking about $1.50 per month plus 40 cents per megabyte, and Skylo's saying they can do this over satellite. So I don't totally know about that $1 a month price. I'm more skeptical of that than I would be of the $100 hardware. So yeah, that was just a quick look at Skylo, trying to work out some of the things that they haven't announced about it yet, some of the more technical details. 
And it's certainly a different style of video from what I usually do, but hey, I if it really is $100 for the hardware and $1 a month when this comes out, I might be interested in picking one up to play with. So I wanted to take a look at it and figured I'd do a video while I was. If you did enjoy the video, then please do make sure to subscribe as it does help us grow. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.